So previously, we looked a little bit at the radio wave and microwave link, how you can use two parabolic dishes and transmit and receive signals. But then there are problems with that if you are very far away. Imagine oh, you are at a place that is very mountainous, like my house. Yes. If you are between here and here, you say, hey, no problem, ah. you just send the wave over there, can ready, right? Eh, what if there's a mountain like this? Then how? You have some problem. I mean, you could try to send wave, but it will attenuate through the mountain, you'll be gone. It could bounce back, it could defrag. Who knows what hap- what's going to happen here? So that's a problem with long distance. Um, and also, you may say, miss, then there's the wave that we looked at earlier, right? That can bounce one. Ah. Planet Earth got atmosphere, right? Here got transmitter, I bounce here, I bounce here, bounce there, bounce, 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 and get there. Well, you see, the bouncing also got problem. Because this upper atmosphere got different, different layer, different, different ways of reflecting. So, you could bounce, this is our sky wave, but it's not the best option. So, hence, mm-hmm. let's look at the problems and how to solve it. So, problem with long distance, if they ever ask you about it, uh, this long distance communication between two towers or two places, uh, it's a problem, especially if you're bouncing, because it is affected by reflection from layers of ions in the up- upper atmosphere, also known as the ionosphere, lah, which we looked at a little bit earlier. Yeah. They, you want to bounce, can, but cannot, they have very hard. Mm. Suddenly, thunderstorm got extra ion there. Thunderstorm, all your everything cannot communicate already. So if you remember when you watch Astro, when, can, when can't we watch Astro when outside raining? For this very reason Astro dish Happened when Malaysia Launched its first satellite And then Relying on the Ionosphere mm. Not consistent Not consistent Imagine you have Class halfway or Then suddenly Outside raining Then you cannot hear Your teacher talk anymore Yep um, oh, Also second problem We mentioned is Hilly areas If you, near, if you mm. stay near Where I live Cell coverage Is just bad Bad Ay, because they don't put enough powers. So poor reception. Oh. Your wave cannot easily just go through all this mountain. Ma. It needs a line of sight to have good, strong connection. Ideally. La. But so the way happen. to solve this is to build another tower on the hill, right? Oh, yeah, ho, it cannot. But then very expensive. You build tower on every hill. Mm, companies want to save costs, you know. So maybe they might do that, maybe they might not. But it's still expensive. Hmm... So the other other problems is your wave band very crowded. Uh, got a lot of wave flying here and there. You put tower here, tower there. Uh, especially those on in the atmosphere bouncing here and there. And also your bandwidth very crowded already. It's very narrow. So you cannot send big amounts of information like you know video streaming. Very hard lah. Uh, especially if you don't have all these towers in between. So mm-hmm. long distance a bit hard. So Miss Lee, what are some ways we can use a satellite to help us? Uh? Instead of relying on a tower, we can send the signal to the satellite, upload mm. on the satellite, regenerate at the satellite, and then send back a strong signal down back to ground. Okay, let me draw out the satellite. So here's a diagram of the whole planet. No, whole planet. Lah. A section of the planet where here is the surface of the Earth. So you're going from very, very far distance. On the left side, we have our transmitter. I'm just going to put T. And you want to somehow send a message to the receiver on the other end. So this triangle thing is what we usually call radio mass. La. Those tall tower you see, sometimes they have dishes on it. Sometimes they just have a lot of needles and antennas and aerials. Okay, so Miss Lee, how do we get a message from the transmitter all the way to the radio mass? <laughs> Without, um, you cannot go through all this stuff, right? Got mountain, got forest, uh, got tower. Cannot. LCC? So how ah? Uh? <laughs> Yes, it's okay. We can go to the satellite. So step one, the radio mass from transmitter is going to send send the wave up link. We're going to send up the link all the way to the satellite. So this is called a carrier wave. It is transmitted from Earth to satellite. Hmm, carrier wave. Ah. So we draw that long. Pew, 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 pew. So instead of trying to talk to someone across the mountain, across the KLCC, you will talk to the satellite. Carrier wave will transmit from Earth to satellite. Mm. Okay. Mm. Now, it is the satellite's job to talk to the other radio master receiver. 
But before that, I draw the line. Mm -hmm. To show. Mm -hmm. so when the satellite receive the signal, because the satellite is so far away, right? It's not on top of your head, right? Satellite is very, very far away. So by the time they receive the signal, the signal will be greatly attenuated. So sad. The intensity is very, very, very small. This is no good. We cannot send a weak signal down to ground again. So what are we going to do to the signal? One, we will amplify the signal. So then the signal is amplified and transmitted back to Earth. So who is doing this amplification on the satellite? Ah? Inside the satellite itself. There's a circuit in the satellite. They program the satellite to receive from the transmitter and amplify the signal before sending it back down. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this uh, transmitted signal down to Earth is at a different frequency, different mm. carrier frequency. So we have, let's say, we're going to differentiate these two frequencies. We're going to call one the uplink, F up. And we're going to call the other one the downlink because the wave is traveling down. Okay, so these two frequencies are not the same. Why not? We have to shift it a bit. Wow, so, downhill, what am I saying? Downlink. <laughs> My brain is going downhill. Downlink. There we go. <laughs> okay, why one down different frequency? Ah, <laughs> uh? yeah. Okay, mm. so um, this one is because we want to prevent this phenomenon called swamping between uplink and downlink. What is swamping? Ah? In, uh, a different way to talk about interference. So if let's say um, when I want to read or receive the radio wave, if I know I'm supposed to receive the wave at a certain frequency, I will only take into account that frequency and I ignore the rest. But if let's say the frequency that I send up and the frequency that I send down is the same frequency, sometimes the circuit will get confused. So are there like some possible frequency or just any frequency also can? Or are there specific up and down link frequencies? No. The regulators, basically uh, people have already sat and had a meeting and they have decided that there are these few different options that you can use as up link and down link pairs. So you kind of have to memorize the pairs. So they it's only... Pass here. They, they, go, they will give mark if you remember. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. So option the first option is to have a 6 gigahertz as uplink and 4 gigahertz as downlink. These are all in gigahertz. Second option is 14 as uplink, 11 as downlink. Third option is 30 as uplink, 20. So the frequency would depend on number one, how much data you are carrying. The more data you're carrying, the higher frequency it will be. But it also means that it's more expensive. Lah, because your circuit has to be able to take the load. The second thing is your downlink will normally have a lower frequency. Okay. What uh, they will ask you is basically in a 4-5 mark essay, explain how a satellite works for communication purposes. Specifically the geostationary satellite. So this satellite have to be geostationary. Meaning at any point in time, whether it's 2 a.m. or 3 p.m., the satellite better be right on top of the hill. Because if the satellite suddenly go away because the Earth is rotating, then GG, oh, the, the radio mask cannot talk to each other. Hey, where's my satellite? It's missing. Yes, so this yes. satellite must always be on top of that hill at that exact location, also known as geostationary satellites. So geostationary, in case you forgot already, we talked about it in a chapter on uh, gravitation. Geostationary means you see this satellite going round the planet, right? It's at the equator and it's always pointing at the same spot on the surface. See the dotted line there? So you turn, the Earth rotate, your satellite also orbit, orbit at the exact same angular frequency and period. That's geostationary. Now the other one, which we didn't really talk about previously, it's another type of orbit right here. So geostationary, you go around the equator. La. This one, wow, different there. Eh? You see this geostationary. Then you got this polar orbit, geographical north and geographical south, north-south. And this orbit, you just go up, down, up, down. So you can go up, down, up, down. You can go around and round and round. And this is two possible setups or two possible orbits that your satellite can have. Let's compare both of them.
Okay, so first thing we need to know is the characteristic. Lah. From the names, you can tell their characteristic. Geostationary, stationary to an Earth observer. So it appears to remain above the same point on the Earth's surface from the viewpoint of a person on Earth. So as remember the mountain drawing that we had just now, the satellite better always be at the same spot, otherwise the two radio masks can't talk to each other. Okay, whereas for polar, it is over the poles. As you can see in the diagram just now, and it is at a lower orbit. It's closer to the surface of the ground. Okay? And because it's closer to the surface of the ground, and it doesn't always have to rotate together with the Earth, so because the polar orbit or the polar satellites are closer to the surface, and it doesn't always have to track at the same point, it doesn't have to rotate together at, with the Earth, it has a much shorter period, guys. It's only 100, 100 minutes to go around the Earth's surface. So in 24 hours, you can circle the Earth a few times. Whereas for geostationary satellite, because it has to stay together or crawl on top of the same point, it is 24 hours. Okay, Let's talk about the orbit or the distance from the surface. Your, because we are following the Earth, it has to be travelling on the equatorial orbit along the equator. And it must have the same direction as the rotation of the Earth which is from west to east. All right? So if you click on the GIF link, you can actually stare at it. You can see the satellite moving from west to east. Okay, And the radius is about 3.6 times 10 to the power of 4 km for the geostationary satellite. Pretty far away. So we're going to also look at the advantages of a geostationary satellite. So the advantages here is that the aerial can be fixed in position so for example, if you have the radio mass, right, we have the satellite dish. Huh? So you can align the satellite dish at a fixed position. You don't have to move here, move there. Okay? Because the satellite does not need to be tracked. The satellite is always there, very reliable. You look up, oh the satellite is there. Every time, anytime, oh satellite is there. Pretty good, no need to track. Alright? So it can be permanently linked to a ground station or a radio mass to maintain communication. So we don't need cables anymore. Between the receiver and the transmitter and all the hill and the city we don't have to put cables we don't have to put any cables just put a satellite on top they talk to each other pretty good okay the advantages of your polar satellite would be there is greater resolution because your signal travel less distance okay because your signal is traveling at a lesser distance and number two because we can control it we can use for spying so if you're rich enough to afford your own satellite, mm, you can spy on people. Though I do not recommend it's an infringement of privacy, but it's it's an option. All right. Um, it can be used for remote sensing. Maybe, for example, there's something strange happening in the middle of the ocean there. I want to go and see. Or I want to go and take some data, some temperature, pressure variation. I can send a satellite there because I can remote control. And because, again, it's close to the Earth's surface, so the signal transmission is not, the lag is not really as noticeable. Less lag, because the signal travel less distance. Okay, and of course, if we compare the advantages, we should know the relative disadvantages. Okay, so number one, communication with the polar regions is not possible. Because if you are along the equator, the polar is not within the line of sight. You cannot see cannot see the satellite cannot see you if you build a radio mass at the north and south poles okay and because the height of the orbit is large it will cause signal attenuation and time delay so the signal travel very far away the intensity or the power will drop and then there will be some form of time delay because the signal travels a large distance and the solution to all both of these problems is that we will use it together with optic fiber. So at places where we know that the signal will travel through multiple satellites, we'll sometimes we'll use cable in conjunction together. And the second is and you see the second problem is that this is expensive. Now. You want to launch a satellite in orbit. You need money, guys. You need money. And guess what? your polar satellite is also equally expensive. And because the polar satellite is everywhere and can be anywhere, you need to track it. You need to know where your satellite is. 
Okay, so need to be tracked by the areas in the dish. Let's say, for example, I am secretly a FBI agent, and every every day, right, I get I get people reporting to me, sending me information about who they are spying on. So my my aerial dish or my laptop aerial need to track the satellite, so that I can know. I now I sit at this window. I know the satellite is now outside at this point in time at 6 p.m. and then I can take the information. I need to track and know where the satellite is. The information, so before the satellite can reach me at 6 p.m. and tell me all the juicy details about what they're spying on, they need to store the information in the satellite first, right? Let's say something something happened 8 p.m. across the world, but 6 p.m. only I can get data. Meaning the satellite have to keep the information until it sees me, the receiver, then it will send the information to me. So this is very expensive. You need to have data storage la. You need to track the dish la. So way more expensive than geostationary satellite. Need money. So everything I think you will notice a trend here. Everything need money. Okay? So I want to just give you a few more numbers. The time delay for the geostationary satellite, the one that travels 3.6 times the power of 4 km, is around 0.24 seconds. The time delay for geostationary satellite is 0.24 seconds. So it may not be a lot, but if you play any RPG first-person shooter game, 0.24 seconds is a matter of life and death. All right. And the second number that I had to look up for you is actually, you know, I keep telling you that the polar satellites are very close. I think for a long time, you're like, how close, how close, how close? This is to help you remember your polar satellite is close and it's about seven to 800 kilometers. Okay. So I think the characteristic will help you recall the advantages and disadvantages. Geostationary satellite, we always know where it is. It is reliable. But because it is far away, we have to place it far away to be in geostationary orbit. The signal will be weaker, it will be attenuated. That is the main problem with geostationary satellite. But we can permanently link, no need to, no need to track. But because it's far away, there's attenuation, there's time delay. Polar is nearby. We can remote control, pretty cool. But because we, have to, we can remote control it, this means we have to track it. You can't remote control something that you don't know where it is, right? Let's say, for example, remote control, you want to turn on the aircon. You point the remote control to the aircon, right? Can you turn on the remote control of an aircon when you don't know where the aircon is? It's randomly point. Okay, so you need to track the satellite. And money lah, needs money. This is a more advanced satellite. So basically, what they'll ask you is just comparing the relative advantages and disadvantages. So if you know the characteristics, it will help you recall the advantages easier. I think that's it. So satellites, pretty cool, man. Very good human technology and i think in the future we have something really interesting in the works right i've heard oh yes yes there's this this thing called starlink and they're trying to create what they call this it, satellites that cover the entire planet to provide internet so you look in the sky and then it's like wow so many star tonight oh why the star moving one ah? <laughs> they're all satellites guys it's not stars so but hey go check out the links and you can see out more about this uh, Starlink and what it does and look at the amount of satellites covering the planet can, you can even imagine what is happening it's <laughs> like a crazy. web yeah lo. a web okay, around planet okay World wide web alright so that's all for this video we'll see you in the final part where we'll talk about attenuation wireless and wired 